ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q3 FY24 earnings conference call of Go Fashion India Limited. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Gautam Saraugi. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening and warm welcome to everyone present on the call. Along with me, I have Mr. R. Mohan, our Chief Financial Officer and SGA Investor Relations Advisor. I hope you all have, all have received the investor deck by now. For those who have not, you can view them on the stock exchange and the company website. The retail sector in India continued to witness weak demand during the third quarter of FY24. This demand sluggishness also moved into the festive season. Despite the ongoing industry level challenges, the company maintained its growth trajectory and had strong focus on operational efficiency. Revenue for nine months FY24 grew by 15% on a YOY basis. Our SSG was flat during Q3 FY24 and nine months FY24, whereas our SCSG stood at 12% and 13% respectively. During the last, uh, during the last quarter, our SSG volume has actually improved from being negative in Q2 to being flat in Q3. While individual store performance may have remained flat, our ability to drive across cluster reflects our resilience and agility in navigating dynamic market conditions. We maintain confidence in the company's capacity to handle such short-term fluctuations and achieve sustainable and consistent growth in the future. Moving on to operational metrics, the company has demonstrated consistent success in maintaining high amount of full price sales, reaching 96% for nine months FY24, alongside an increase in ASP, which stood at 752 compared to 723 for the same period last year. The highlights of the uniqueness of the business showcased by strong brand recognition and customer loyalty. For nine months FY24, the company added a total of 74 net stores. Bringing a, bringing a grand total store count to 704 stores in line with our commitment to, in, to increasing accessibility and convenience for our customers. We aim to add 100 to 110 stores on a net basis for the full year of FI24. To elevate customer satisfaction, we are exploring omni-channel approaches to, that merge technology with physical and online shopping, widening our customer base across various cities. We have expanded our EBOs to 14 more cities in the, ni in the nine months ended in FI24 strengthening our presence and reaching more customers. Coming to our working capital and cash flows, the company has achieved a strong positive cash, uh, operating cash flow of Rs. 104 crores pre India 116, which was uh, 0.5 crores for the same period last year. This is on account of strong inventory management system uh, combined with continuous inventory rationalization where required. This further aligns the company's commitment to sustainable growth driven by cash flow generation. We are fully committed to improving our operational efficiency and have seen significant progress in managing our working capital. Our working, uh, working capital cycle has, reduced by, uh, has been reduced to 125 days as on December 2023. Specifically, we have reduced our inventory by 29 days from March 23 to December 23 and now it stands at 97 days, which is reflecting the positive operating cash flow generated by the company for the period. Given the current weak demand, uh, scenario in the retail industry, the short-term outlook may appear challenging. However, when, uh, when viewed from a broader long-term perspective, there are encouraging signs and opportunities for growth. While immediate consumer spending might, might be subdued due to various factors impacting demand, such as changing consumer behavior or, or slowing discretionary spend, the underlying fundamentals of the retail sector stay strong. The industry resilience and our ability to adapt to evolving market conditions coupled with investments in technology, product innovation, and positions as well to achieve sustainable growth going forward. With this, I would like to hand over the call to our CFO, Mr. R. Mohan, for an update on the Q3 and 9 months uh, FI24 results and financials. Thank you. Thank you, Gautam, and good evening, everyone. 
the company continues to maintain a strong operating performance despite the challenging business environment first i would like to give you all financial highlights for q3 fy24 our revenues for the quarter stood at 202 crores as against 176 crores in q3 fy23 a growth of 15% yoy gross profits stood at 124 crores a growth of 19% yoy with a gp margin of 61.5% for the quarter our ebitda for the quarter stood at rupees 68 crores as compared to the 60 crores in q3 fy23 a growth of 13% yoy our ebitda margin stood at 33.4% Profit after tax for the quarter stood at 23 crores, a degrowth of 4% YOI. Fat margin stood at 11.6%. Coming to the nine month FY24 performance, revenue stood at 581 crores in nine months FY24 as against 504 crores in nine months FY23, a growth of 15% YOI. Gross profit stood at 355 crores a growth of 17% year on year with a gp margin of 15 1.2% for the 9 months ended ebitda for 9 months fi24 stood at rupees 184 189 crores as compared to rupees 163 crores in 9 months fi23 a growth of 16% year on year our ebitda margin stood at 32.4% fat for 9 months fi24 stood at uh, 70 crores as compared to 68 crores in 9 months FI23, a growth of 3% OII, fat margin stood at 12%. Our advertisement spent during 9 months FI24 stands at 1.94% of the revenue. ROCE and ROE on an annualized basis stand at 15.5% and 15.7% respectively. Cash and cash equivalent stood at rupees 197.2 crores as on 31st December 2023. With this, we will now open the floor for the question and answers. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have our first question from the line of Devanshu Bansal from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on, on a very good working capital optimization. Uh, sir, first question uh, uh, is on ASP. Uh, for H1, we see, did see very good ASP grow. Uh, but Q3 uh, ASP sort of uh, indicates that it is largely flat. Uh, so what is the reason for this? And uh, uh, are we also sort of seeing uh, lower items per bill uh, in case this is a down trading phenomena because of weak consumer sentiment? Yeah, hi, Dimanshu. Thanks for the question. Uh, see, this ASP uh, being flat uh, compared to Q3 last year is largely because of two reasons. One is product mix. This time, the slightly uh, lower value products are sold a lot more in terms from a product mix perspective. And the second smaller reason is that uh, this time we have run some festive bill level promotions in November and December, in half of November and two weeks of December. So these are the two main reasons why the ASP has remained flat. The larger reason is that the product mix uh, has, is because of the product mix. This time, slightly the lower ASP product is sold a little more than the higher ASP. That's why the ASP on a YOI basis for quarter 3 has remained flat. Right. And any comment on items per bill, sir? I mean, uh, what is the time there? Fairly similar. No change on that. Fairly similar. Okay. Uh, second question is on uh, this 12 to 13 percent SCSG that they have reported for Q3 and 9 months. Uh, so hmm. how should we uh, see this growth number? Is this like indicative of uh, uh, market share gains in those particular clusters or the market itself is growing at 12-13% as per your assessment? No, I mean, look, uh, it's very difficult to know at what speed the market is growing. It's uh, because we've always had the cluster-based expansion model in our real estate uh, de uh, business development. This is just uh, attribute to we adding more stores in our existing clusters and strengthening our business. 
So it's very difficult to compare with what those clusters market rate is growing at. We don't have that data, but this is just strengthening to our. Uh, this basically attributes to our expansion uh, strengthening in cluster. Got it. Sir. Uh, on gross margin front, uh, Gautam, uh, last year there was some higher sharing of discounts also uh, with LFS partners, which uh, 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 Go Fashion sort of called out. Uh, in my view, that should also have uh, resulted in about uh, 200 bits of benefit uh, on that account itself. Uh, can you explain as in uh, whether we have uh, started to realize uh, the benefit of low cost inventory or that is still uh, uh, so no, so very, very rightly you pointed out, Devan. So in quarter three, we had such provisions in our LFS revenue, which you rightly pointed out last year, same quarter. So this year, uh, I would contribute, attribute 1%, 100 bits increase because of cotton prices. Okay. So I think we've reported 170 bits of increase in gross margin, if I'm not wrong. Uh, so in that amount, sorry? 200, uh, 200 basis point. Yeah. yeah, so out yeah. of the 200 basis point, about 1% would be pertaining to cotton. Got it. And lastly, uh, if you could also explain the signality of uh, gross margin for your EBOs, not for the entire business. Just for your EBOs, as in between quarters, how, how the trend pans out uh, between Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4? Uh, usually, Q1, Q3, and Q4 would be similar. Q2 is the highest because Q2 is, is usually when the EUS period, ha period happens. So I would say Q1, Q3, Q4 would be similar. Q2 is when slight dip in gross margin happens. Slight dip in gross margin. Got it. Slight Got dip it. in gross margin because that is the EUS window. Yes, sir. Uh, got it. Uh, thank you, Gautam. Uh, thanks for taking the question. Thank you, Devan. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Samir Gupta from India Info Line. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, good evening and thanks for taking my question. I have two. Uh, so, firstly, I noticed that in the opening remarks, you mentioned that uh, store opening guidance for this year is 100 to 110 stores. And uh, uh, we have always mentioned this to be 120 to 130. So, there is a dip there. Uh, so, uh, going forward also, you had earlier guided for a 150 to 160 store additions. So, mm -hmm. is there any recalibration there or there it is still uh, the same? And uh, it's just a clarification, if this number pertains to gross additions or net additions, that would be helpful. Sure. Thank you, Sam. So, Samir, all our guidance as far as new stores are always net addition. That's what we guide. Uh, so, we usually guide very rightly. You pointed out we guide between 120 to 140. Uh, actually, what has happened this year, we've had 13 closures. And because we've had 13 store closures, our net additions have fallen. So, that's why uh, uh, instead of achieving 120 stores, we will be slightly lower. It's because of store closures. Now, these 13 closures, what these 13 closures are, these 13 stores were our historical stores which did not recover post COVID, and they were break, they were breaking even for the longest time. Last couple of quarters, we noticed that these stores the stores have become negative, and that's why we have taken a call. So this is more like a one-off item which has happened. So that's why our net additions are a little lower because of the 13 store closures. As far as next year is concerned, uh, we are looking to uh, adding about 150 stores net addition. We're keeping that guidance good because we feel. From next year onwards, demand should pick up and we would be uh, keeping that uh, expectation of adding 150 net additions. Uh, great, that is helpful. Uh, secondly, uh, just a ballpark calculation on three index EBITDA suggests that we have largely maintained it around 19.5% this quarter versus similar last year. And with a flattish SSSG, uh, and uh, the gross margin benefit being taken away by increase in ad spend, uh, I'm just wondering why there is no negative operating leverage coming in. In fact, if I do a ballpark calculation on the fixed rental per store, it is actually declined by 5%. Uh, so, I mean, these are ballpark numbers, so, I mean, uh, but still you get the point, right? Uh, so Yeah, Samir, but actually, uh, actually there is a fall in pre and days EBITDA. So, last year in Q3, we had a pre and days EBITDA of 22%. And this year we have a pre end is EBITDA of 19.7%. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe my so there is a fall. Last year there, there is a fall. There is a fall. Basically, this fall is largely because of the higher salary and rent cost because of flat SSG. 
higher sorry higher uh, 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 is that this fall in operating margin from 22% to 19% 19.7% is because of higher salaries and rent costs Oh, okay, okay. Got it. Got it, sir. That's all. That's all from me. Thanks. I'll come back in the queue, sir, when you follow up. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Ankit Kedia from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, first question is on the inventory. Commendable job on inventory in the peak season. Just want to know, is this sub-100 days now sustainable going ahead or... The, you know, given the festive, you know, the buying was low. And as we enter Q4, we will see some increase of inventory build up there. Uh, so, Ankit, this is pretty much sustainable. So, right now, currently, we are on 97 days based on 9 months average sale. Uh, on the March number also, I think we will be similar. So, I think over a period of time, this 97 days should stabilize uh, at around maybe about 88 or 9, about 90 days. In uh, in March, I think we might hold some higher inventory because for summer season we introduced some styles. So we might hold slightly higher inventory, but it shouldn't make the inventory days go up dramatically. And this reduction is inventory, you know, if I look at the store front, we have not seen reduction at the store level inventory. This is purely from the warehouse inventory where the reduction has come in. So from a cover perspective, um, you know, what has being done at the warehouse level by you in terms of pure RM and finished goods inventory? No, see, we were, uh, if I if you look at my March numbers, uh, we were actually having a lot of high inventory at the warehouse level as far as finished goods and RM is concerned. So we have reduced, uh, you know, our FG at the warehouse in March was around 99.9 crores, which we reduced to 71.7 crores in December. Our uh, RM inventory also has slightly come down from 43.5 crores to 35 crores. We basically fine-tuned the base stock or the appropriate stock levels in our ERP. And once we do that, the ra once we change the ratios in our uh, stock uh, management ERP, it automatically starts showing in the numbers. So it's just a result of we bringing down the stock level. We felt that we don't have to have that kind of high inventory. So over a period of, gradually over a period of two, three quarters, it has uh, shown us results and tapered down. Uh, my second question is on the rental part. You know, uh, we are opening bigger stores and the revenue per store or, or the throughput uh, continues to be the same or slightly lower given the subdued environment we are in. Uh, are you looking at opening smaller sizes or you think that 500 square feet size is the base and incrementally throughput, you know, might remain at that 19, 20,000 sales per square feet or we might see an increase there as well? Uh, as the bigger store inventory is more better at the store level. Sure, sure. So, Ankit, uh, so yeah, this is a good question. I'll, I'll just take a minute to explain it. See, Ankit, whenever we are opening any type of store, for us, size is an important ratio, but what we really budget is what is our rent to revenue ratio. If I get the perfect location in the market, even, and if the rent is in my bucket of, say, 13% or 15% to revenue ratio, then I might even take a bigger store or even a smaller store. For me, my prime of focus selection of our outlet is based on the location itself rather than the size. So, moving forward, if we get the right location, we might even open a 600, 700 square feet. We might even open a 200, 300 square feet. It is all on the basis of location selection. Now, what happens is, between a 600, 700 and 200, 300 square feet, rental is anyways budgeted. The capex is not very different between the two formats. And even your operating costs, like your uh, your employee costs also, you might have only those three, four people in a 600, 700 square feet versus the 200, 300 square feet. So your dynamics between a slightly larger store or smaller store does not change un uh, unless your rental changes. Now, coming to sales per square feet, uh, I've also guided in the past that we actually as a company don't look at sales per square feet because of this very reason. Because we go by rent to sales ratio and not by square feet, we always look at absolute averages of a store and what kind of EBITDA percentage it throws rather than looking at SPS. Fair point, fair point. Now, my third question is on the promotion in the quarter. I noticed for the first time uh, since listing, uh, you know, higher bill sizes, we are offering some vouchers to the consumers uh, for the next purchases uh, and that indirect discounting, right? 
So from that perspective, are you really seeing that kind of a slowdown in the market? You have to call out these offers to the consumer. Or this is a regular affair in the past as well. This is a this is a three volume. We've done it for almost four five years. See what happened basically to during uh, festive season to increase the ATV and the bill basket. We give out certain redeemable vouchers on a particular bill value. Now what happens is suppose you are giving out say thousand vouchers or say hundred vouchers. Your conversion of these vouchers in terms of redemption are less than fifteen percent. So because the redemption has always been low, we've always carried this uh, process of giving vouchers and making the primary bill a higher value bill. And this we've always done as of uh, for the last four five years. Instead, we, in fact, we've been doing it since pre-COVID. This is a very festive. Uh, this is a very festive arrangement we do. This is not from a inventory liquidation perspective. This is purely just to uptick the bill value. Sure. And lastly, on the pledges, we are less than one month away from your guidance of March end. Um, sure. Is there any update uh, for the pledges sure. reversal? Yeah, I'll give an update. See, uh, we had planned for March, but uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, it will get delayed by a few more months. I would like to reassure everyone that the pledge is absolutely safe, and things are going in the right positive direction. We are just delayed by a few months, but it, but it will close soon. It is working in the positive direction, and as far as promoters are concerned, it is on top of our priority list, and uh, this will close uh, for sure. And I would like to reassure everyone: this is absolutely safe. There's no problem with that. Um, got them on the pledges part. Um, can we see any directional improvement, like small pledges getting reversed, and then you know we see all you think is going to be a bullet reversal where 100% reversal will happen? Yet. No, no. When the when the clearance will start, and it will clear in that way. So uh, in, initially, one part of the pledge will get over, then the second part. So within that few months, uh, most of the pledge should get over. That's how it. What you said is absolutely right. It will get in uh, one certain percentage will get released first, then the second. It goes in a. It goes in that manner. Understood. Understood. Thank you so much, Gautam. Thank you, Uncle. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sabya Sachi Mukherjee from Bajaj Fins of AMC. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is, uh, you know, on the SSG volume. Uh, my calculation suggests that uh, since ASP has been relatively flat, and we reported a SSG value of uh, you know flattish, uh, the the volume decline has been arrested. Is that a fair uh, understanding? Yes, yes, uh, Sadhu Sajji. The understanding is clear. The volume SSG in quarter three has uh, is is flat. It is a zero. So it was about negative five or six percent in Q2, and it has improved to zero percent in Q3. Right. So going forward, uh, how how do you kind of look at it uh, in terms of footfalls or let's say uh, you know uh, are we uh, you know confident enough to say let's say this is the bottom or or Q4 maybe there might be again a decline in the volume front. See, uh, right now it's a little hard to say. We will get an understanding of Q4 probably after February 15th. Uh, usually midway point is when we have a full understanding of how the quarter is. So it's a little difficult to suggest, but I'm expecting at a value level, at a company overall value level, a mid-teens type of growth in Q4. Uh, this, sorry, this mid-teens level of growth you are saying uh, on the revenue? At the overall level, on the revenue overall level. Okay, okay. Uh, on the SSG part, it's a little too early to comment uh, because we probably will get a better idea of SSG for Q4 when probably when we are at the halfway stage after 15 February when we get a better clarity. Got it. Got it. Uh, follow up to that is uh, on the FI24 revenue guidance of 800 crores. Uh, still intact, or uh, are we uh, kind of revising that? No, it is. It is. It is. We won't be able to achieve 800 uh, for sure because uh, our for the first nine months we have done a uh, 581 crore number, and we are expecting right. a mid-team type of number in Q4. So unfortunately, we have not been able to hit the 800 crore this year. Okay, okay, uh, got it. Next question is on the inventory. Uh, can you please provide the breakup between uh, the RM and FG and 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 uh, sure. you know uh, in FG uh, between warehouse and store? Sure. Uh, our RM inventory as on December 31st is 35.68 crore. Our FGI warehouse uh, is at about 71.7 crores, and our FGI stores is at about 98.44 crores. So our total inventory is 
205.84 crores versus 230 crores in March. Got it. And so, so uh, follow up to this is the the kind of inventory reduction that we saw in the warehouse level uh, since March 23. Uh, is it purely because of the uh, lower cotton cost and and hence the total inventory gets revalued at a lower cost or there is also uh, an element of you know uh, lower number of items in uh, sitting in the warehouse no well. no this is not because of cotton price see we have actually not been purchasing literally anything that's why in our gross margin we have not seen that kind of uptick in our gm this inventory reduction is purely on the basis of optimizing sourcing and buying Okay. Okay. Uh, got it. Lastly, uh, on the A N P expenses, uh, I believe this quarter you have spent a little higher uh, than than I think probably what you have guided in last call. What would be the target for full year? One point five percent, I think, was the last uh, uh, communication from your side. This quarter we have spent little higher. Uh, so uh, for uh, for the nine months, uh, we are at about one point nine percent of revenue. So it will be sim- in similar lines by March. It will be around 1.9. It will be under 2 percent. And any any guidance for next year? You are looking at similar 2 percent number? Uh, uh, right now we haven't budgeted for next year. Maybe closer to March is when we are going to be budgeting the absence for next year. Got it. Got it. But more or less it will be in the similar range only. I don't see it changing too much, frankly. It will be in the range of 2 percent only. Sure. Sure. Thanks, thanks, Gautam. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Most welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may press star at work to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Prerna Junjunwala from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just wanted to understand uh, your opening remark statement wherein you mentioned that you are exploring omni-channel opportunities. So, if you could just help us uh, elaborate on that. Yeah, see, what we've been doing uh, for the last uh, year or two, a little longer, is that uh, how we are able to convert an online customer, an offline customer, to online sales. Because in retail, what happens is when you're running a such a uh, compact size store, sometimes on a weekend, it becomes very difficult for a for the customer to get the entire set of colors or sizes. So there, we are trying to see if we are able to convert that offline customer to online, and then immediately, you know, by using a online tab at the store. to uh, place the order for the customer and get it home delivered so in certain stores we implemented it and we are seeing some success so it's taking some time for, for us to scale it but this kind of omni channel approach is seeing us uh, you know not lose a uh, weekend sale in certain stores okay okay and uh, how does it help you uh, in terms of uh, getting the rev- you know uh, i mean i'm just trying to understand the impact of this in the stores that you have implemented already we have seen in some stores where this is a success we have seen an increase of 1 or 1% or 1 and 1/2% in sales of that particular store and we feel that you know if if the the trend and the the trend of omni picks up then maybe over a longer period of time this can be a good addition or contributor to the store's revenue because at the end of the day no store can vouch saying that there are no loss of sales because on a weekend all colors and sizes might not be available So if there, if we are able to convert some into online, it can be a contributor to the revenue. Very difficult to say how much. I think once we implement a more larger sample size of stores, we know how much it can contribute as a percentage. Okay. Um, second question is on LFS strategy. Um, uh, going forward, also, do we see the same kind of expansion in LFS of around two fifty to three hundred or the stores? Uh, Across the uh, tier two, tier three, tier one cities, and also if you could help us understand the demand in the various uh, type of cities, uh, which could help us understand the demand scenario in a better manner. Sure, Prina. So Prina, see, uh, usually on a steady state basis, we always guide that the number of LFS stores we are going to be adding will be about 100 to 150 LFS stores. So I think for next year also we are guiding about 100 to 150 doors. Uh, as far as demand is concerned, uh, we are uh, see our presence is largely in the metro city, and um, like 60 to 65 percent of our entire network is in the top eight or top ten cities. So from that perspective, demand in the metro cities has been 
week and the same trend has been seen in the tier 2 series as well we have not seen either have been an outlier okay okay thank you thank you so much sure. back. thank you very much yeah thank you the next question is from the line of priyank cheda from valum capital please go ahead uh yeah hi so my question is so if i have to refer to nine month trend now uh, where our pbt growth is just 4% uh ssg uh, is zero and cluster growth is 13% what does this imply this three data points you have to put it together is that the new stores that have been added into the cluster have not added meaningfully to the sales why customers in that same cluster are buying and hence your cluster growth is 13% so then the then why should we uh, you know add new stores into the same cluster load the cost in the cluster uh, and rather go on a national expansion so just a thought around it uh, would be helpful he also uh, priyank uh, see what happens why do we expand in clusters because shopping in a city happens in clusters you understand like for example now in chennai there is an area called uh, pondi bazar which is in dinagar now pondi bazar as a market caters to different different parts of chennai now for example if there is jaynagar in bangalore jaynagar as a uh, as an area will cater to different different parts of bangalore if i don't grow in the same cluster i won't be able to grow my revenue because shopping does not happen by residential locality it happens by shopping cluster so in general in retail if you have to continue growing your size and footprint you have to keep growing in cluster now coming to the point on operational efficiency the because ssg has been flat and the new stores what we added in this particular 9 months when ssg is flat even your newer stores what you add will tend to underperform than the regular new store average because of that we've had a operational uh, reduction in margin no so so what i'm trying to understand is uh, a, a new store in a pondi bazaar uh, should uh, should also grow if that cluster is growing uh, is what i'm uh, not able to understand now uh, because if that new store is going to add a shopping experience or or is going to add a or, or is going to save the logistics cost for a customer now uh, to travel Ah, uh, 2 kilometers to buy a 700 article. Now, uh, so that so it means that new stores should meaningfully also grow uh, in that cluster. Now uh, is what I'm trying to understand. Yeah, so that one store obviously the addition has happened. The one store sales uh, sales have been added to the overall revenue, but whereas the other stores have not grown in this weak environment. So the question is, if I would not have added the store, would my SLC be positive? The answer is no. because when we are adding another store in the same cluster we are mindful of the cannibalization part wherever we feel the stores are going to get deeply cannibalized we don't add another store in that cluster so it basically trying to attract higher market share of that particular cluster by opening another store got it got it uh and on the inventory uh, side now uh, so so our, our key mode is to keep the number of colors sizes uh, available so that uh, whenever customer comes uh, customer doesn't get uh, 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 the, the, the articles are available in our store so when we are rationalizing the inventory at the store now uh, are we not compromising on the sizes colors that 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 go colors is known for it no so priyank see if uh, earlier i had actually answered this question see when we had got into the optimization mode for inventory we had very, we were very clear that we wanted to optimize inventory at the warehouse front so what has changed from march till now is inventory has got optimized only at the warehouse the store front the same inventory carry forward yeah i understand so I, what i'm trying to uh, uh, ask is uh the article may be available at a warehouse so a green color uh, for a l size would be sold so once that is sold at the store would get easily replenished from the warehouse in 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 that case in case the green color is not available at the warehouse wouldn't it affect the sales uh, for a uh, for that particular article no i understand what you're saying so basically we have not optimized it to that extent that there is loss of dispatch from the warehouse to the store 
See, when we have optimized it, we have kept in mind what is going to be our throughput in our stores and how much is going to be needed for us to dispatch from the warehouse to store. Keeping in that mind, uh, keeping that in mind, we had optimized it. So we have not over optimized it as well. See, where we have loss of saves or loss of dispatch. Got it. And uh, uh, what would be the number of stores that would be falling into the cluster SSD calculations uh, now in Q3? Uh, it will be around 425, about 430, 432 stores. Last quarter it was around 450. So would it remain? I'll have to that, that might add. Then maybe what number I'm giving right now is wrong. I'll have to just check and come back to you on this. I'll, so I'll on, share the data on offline. On an average, so on an average, in case we are adding 25 stores, the similar way 25 stores would also get added to the cluster with whatever the base number. Not that necessary. We have. Not necessary because when we are adding uh, X number of stores a year, some might be new cities as well, and some might not be in clusters as well. It's not that our entire store count what we are adding are in clusters. That's not true. But anyway, this uh, of how many stores across how many clusters, I'm not having it handy. I'll uh, share it offline through SQ. No problem. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Piran. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nilesh Shah from Julius Bayer. Please go ahead. Uh, yes. Hi. Hi. Are Are you Are you able to hear me? Yes, Mr. Nilesh. Please go ahead. Hi. Hi. Yes. So just a. Uh, qualitative uh, comment, right, I would like to understand from the management team, right, you know, based on the numbers that you have put out thus far, you know, what is giving you confidence that you are not losing market share, right? And I'm asking this specifically because, you know, there are, uh, you know, multi-product companies, right, some retailers, some brands, right, uh, where, you know, uh, at least there is uh, some indication that they are able to uh, succeed both on their, uh, you know, offline stores and also online to an extent, right? So, I am, yeah, you know, and I understand data is hard to get, right? But, but I do recall in the past that you used to maintain uh, – some information by capturing, you know, the mobile number of your customers. And so, have you seen any drop in frequency of your loyal customers, right? And that's something perhaps you can quantitatively answer, but qualitatively, if you can also give further color, what is giving you confidence that you're not losing market share? Thank you. In the bottom wear category itself. Thanks, thanks. You can go on. Yeah, so so let's see. Uh, one of the biggest confidence points is that even in a tough environment uh, like we are in for apparel retail, we've uh, our overall company growth has been about 15%. We have seen volume growth at an overall company level. We have not seen volume degrowth in quarter three. So where the industry has been going through a struggle, we have then performed decently well, especially in our vintage markets. So that. So keeping these points in mind, and look, we, interact, we keep interacting with our customers. Our most vintage customers also keep coming back to the store to understand what's new, what new color has come out, what new products are going. So from a bottom wear perspective, we are very much relevant because from a product portfolio, we really involved. Now, we, we, now we, we are in the in quarter one, we had also come up with a jeans product. Over a period of time, we introduced new colors and other bottom wear products as well. So from a product perspective, we are very fresh with the customers we are dealing with. So these few things gives us confidence that we are heading in the right direction and not losing market share. Okay. Uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, so, look, I, 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 I think... Voice is breaking a bit. Hello? Hello? Yes, yes. Now you're audible. Uh, you know, I, I, I think the uh, only sort of... Uh, area that where I would probe for uh, is to ask that essentially for your customer, right? You know, if we believe that they are buying a bottom wear after having purchased a, you know, a top wear, you know, product elsewhere, right? Then for, for, for that uh, transaction, right, you have to, you know, you know, basically believe that you will, you know, you will 
do you know you, you know for you to sustain your market share and position in the minds of your you know of your of your customers right are you seeing that in micro markets where you operate do you do you believe that your revenue growth in those clusters right are keeping pace with the revenue growths of say the larger peers who operate there right uh, yeah you know because also bear in mind you know a number of them players have also become very large on the online segment right which you may not be able to capture in your local intelligence so nilay see uh, i i understand where you're coming from the uh, largely bottom wear category is the more of an offline category because colors mm-hmm. need to be matched on an online uh, platform for you to match so many colors becomes specifically very difficult it's not possible so this right. is this is more of an offline category secondly right. why we feel we are currently relevant in today's times as we are evolving also as we do is because the ladies buying behavior is that she wants to buy the top separately and the bottom separately See what right. happens in a topwear store because their focus area is topwear. They are unable to keep the range of bottoms what a dedicated bottomwear store would be able to keep. And mm-hmm. that is why today a lady is choosing to buy the top from the topwear store and the bottom from the bottomwear store. And one of the reasons why we feel they are not losing market share right now is because in terms of uh, competition, we don't see too much of competition elsewhere. Everywhere we are seeing competition coming up, but right now. it's not made a very big dent or it's not made a dent at all in our uh, in our uh, so so so, so that is where i am challenging your lens right i think perhaps one of the lens that you are using is are there other bottom wear brands like 11 or something and are they doing better than you but what i am asking is let's say a company uh, you know an in house brand of cave xi right if they are selling a a, a consolidated product the top wear plus bottom wear are you losing market share to that that's the question i yeah, know so that you are exactly. doing very well versus an 11 and all that but are you losing share to a consolidated product that a customer is choosing to pick up so so nilesh yeah alex is a very good question so nilesh what happens is an lfs competes with another lfs a private label of an lfs like a website you mentioned they will compete with another private label of another lfs a vanilla brand like us will compete with another vanilla brand that's why in a mall today uh, from variety of retail you have a large commerce stores and you have multiple vanilla stores a vanilla stores will a vanilla store and a vanilla brand will never compete with an lfs and i'll tell you why conceptually an lfs is a type of retail store where they have multiple different categories without going deep in any one category so customer who's entering an lfs is entering in a very different mindset whereas a vanilla brand like us or a top wear brand will go deep in that one category and keep more options so a lady who's buying at a go colors is also buying at an lfs is just that her buying behavior is different between two. so it's a apples so i would say uh, to put it in better words it's an apples to oranges comparison between an lfs and an vanilla brand i see Okay. 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 Great. No. No. I. Th- I think. Uh, you know. Thanks for that. Uh, we will get in touch with you. I'll connect with you offline. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'll connect. Thank. Thank you, Nandesh. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vaishnavi Mandanya from Anandrati. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Um, I'm sorry if I missed this, but. Um, there's been a very sharp uh, absolute increase in our employee expenses and other expenses uh, line items this quarter and um, their ad expenses don't seem to be much like significantly higher and it the increase is far higher than the network addition also that we've seen in the ebo um, so uh, uh, stores so what is the reason for the same so so basically on the employee cost front uh, the employee cost sharp increase is because uh, we've added new stores so this is largely front end employee if i take our back end head office and warehousing employee cost there's no much change in that apart from the increments we have given but there's no much change in that so it, this is largely increase from a front end perspective uh, which is ebo and lfs 
uh, on the other expenses line item, I think if I'm not wrong, there is a 4.7 crore increase in other expenses uh, between quarter three this year and quarter three last year. So this is largely uh, advertising spends of about two crores, and uh, another 50, 60 lakhs was pertaining to stores which we have closed and taken a taken a write off on in the period. Okay. Gotcha. So about if I roughly about out of the 4.7 crores, three crores would be pertaining to ad spends and the few stores which we have closed. We have taken a write off in the other expenses column. Okay, understood. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Vishnu. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Binoy from Suniti Securities and Finance Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, um, I got him. Thank you for the opportunity to ask questions. Uh, a few data points. Uh, uh, I couldn't get the, you said, pre India data margin for Q3 FY24 was 19.7%. Am I correct? Correct. Yes, correct. Versus? Versus 22% in Q3. Last year, last year Q3, correct. Understood. Okay. Uh, now, and also, could you help me with the rental expense for Q3 F24? Sure. The rental cost, uh, before India's uh, rental cost is, for Q3 is 30.1 30, 30 crores. 30 for Q3. Okay. Sure. This is non-index. The end is rent, rent, rent paid. Pre-end is total rent, right? Yeah, total rent paid pre-end is 30.1 crores. Understood. Understood. Fair enough. Uh, Gautam, you said uh, earlier in your remarks, you said that the gross margin uh, season wise, so Q1, Q3, and Q4 is somewhat similar, while Q2, uh, the gross, gross margin is slightly lower due to USS, right? Correct. I was just one. I was just wondering that uh, even Q4 gross margin should be somewhat similar to, will, to because of the EOS. Will be, yeah, will be, but it will be somewhere in between Q2 and Q1, a regular quarter. The highest impact on the gross margin usually comes in Q2. It comes in Q4 as well, very rightly you pointed, but the impact from a trajectory perspective is more in Q2. Understood. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, another question was on the SSG growth that we plugged uh, you know, uh, from the flattish range for the nine months, right? And flattish was slightly negative. Uh, I understand that there has been, uh, you know, consumer spending slowdown and uh, there has been a little weak macros. However, if you look at your company's trajectory pre, uh, pre-COVID, right, we used to do SSGs well above 10 percent. Um, uh, so I was just wondering, in this in this four years, also what has happened is that there has been a proliferation of national players. Uh, so is, would you, would you say that the softness in the SSG is also because of uh, uh, hidden competition from national players? Uh, no, I wouldn't say na- a competition from national players. See, our pre-COVID SSG was in high double digits. I had, uh, in fact, we were uh, guiding and estimating an SSG at a value level of about 8 to 10 percent. From that high uh, double digit, I came down to 8 to 10 percent because we've also added more number of our own stores in our own clusters. So sometimes we become our biggest competition to our existing stores. Having said that, when we are adding stores in a cluster, we do it from a mindset of non-cannibalization. So this 8 to 10 percent SSG is what usually we guide, but unfortunately the overall retail scenario has been a little muted. So this SSG has been has taken a hit. Uh, okay. Uh, another question I wanted to understand on your price architecture, right? Uh, that you have and you've maintained that. Obviously you've taken a little bit of pricing to offset uh, the commodity inflation, but by and large. You've maintained the price architecture roughly about 250 to 1600 rupees and 80 plus percent of your, of your products, uh, are below 1000, 1050 rupees, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Yeah. So, uh, do you feel that, uh, you know, that, that, having said this, uh, most of your products are actually upwards of 5600 rupees, priced upwards of 5600 rupees, right? 
so having said this uh, do you feel there is a need to maybe uh, introduce uh, certain products at a very low price points which can recruit additional customers into your fold oh uh, well i don't think that needed because the kind of customer segment we are targeting hello am i audible no yes 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 yeah, sorry uh, so i'm saying the kind of customer segment we are targeting an asp of 700 to 800 rupees is very 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 competitively priced so i don't think uh, we have to lower our pricing to lure more cus- lure more customers it's not needed in fact we are looking to increase our asp and take it as close as to 1000 as possible we feel that uh, the the mid level customer and the premium customer uh, it will be that asp will be well suited for those two income segments without any problem understood okay uh, could you help me with the volume growth for q3 the overall volume growth not the same store sales volume growth sure sure i'll just tell it in a minute just give me a second it would be uh, i think it would be around 10% uh one second i tell you overall volume will be about 6% for so 6% 6% for 9 months overall volume uh, no could you help me for q3 for q3 just give me a second it's 7.6% 7.6 okay and my last overall. question got about some just a small clarification so by giving inventory break up you said the rm inventory was 35.6 crores uh, whereas uh, fg inventory was 71. 7 crores and store fg inventory was how much 98.44 crores 98.44 crores okay uh, so are you actually kind of reducing the inventory at the at at at, at a store level at peak no not at a store level the optimization what i what has happened is actually happened at the warehouse and at the uh, at the warehouse level at the fg and rm level not at the store level. Okay. Okay. That's all from my side. Thank you so much. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gautam Rati from CWC. Please go ahead. Say hi, Gautam. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, okay. Just uh, two questions. One, uh, a clarification. So, in in one of the earlier questions, you you said that uh, due to store closure, you had an impact of about. 3 crore is that number right what i heard 3 crore or is, was it no no uh, the 3 crore in the 3 crores 2 crores is relating to accent okay 2 crore so 1 crore is the net net one time it's impact it's slightly lower than 1 crore uh, exact number i'm not having handy my understanding is 60 to 70 lakhs would be regarding to store closure okay got it and the second thing uh, so we have been uh, uh, so you know the the floods in chennai and all uh, did we see an impact since we have a larger presence there like some kind of impact which yeah you know, when it happened uh, one weekend got spoiled for for tamil nadu as retail because see, the flood situation in chennai was bad but even uh, the other parts of tamil nadu retail got impacted so i think in the overall scheme of things uh, i think we lost a weekend of weekend sale one weekend uh, sale in tamil nadu uh, and and tamil nadu would be what, what proportion of your revenue roughly uh would be would would be about 20 25% 20% of my revenue 20% of your revenue uh, lost the weekend that's how it is yeah one weekend yeah yes absolutely uh, uh, as well as just one more uh, question just wanted to understand you know you also mentioned that uh, you are at an asp of 750 and you are uh, aspiring to eventually move towards the 1000 rupee asp uh, mark right uh, going with your customers uh so you know just also wanted to understand do you also have a plan uh, to go uh, uh, you know at the lower you don't want to target the the entry level customer uh, or do you think for you this this is the best way to scale right i'm just trying to understand uh, you know for your 20% growth is this the way you're thinking about it or should your growth be faster if you if you also look at it as uh, this differently right no no see i think you could lowering the pricing will definitely not help because the kind of customers we are dealing with see we have for example our making is a 599 product 
and uh, if we uh, an entry level product of a much lower quality garment would be 399 the customer who is buying the 399 entry legging of a low quality also will also buy my 599 so i don't have to really decrease my prices to generate more volume it's not going to increase the volume in any way so for us we see the kind of customers we are dealing between the mid level and the premium the 750 to 1000 is a very good asp to be part of see anywhere when we are crossing 1000 then we are moving away from the mid level then that can be which you rightly pointed out but okay. between 750 and 1000 is a very good sweet spot perfect okay. actually sir, i have I, I just wanted to refine my question uh, better so that i am able to uh, to kind of put, put it across properly no no the idea is very clear that we want to increase our asp slowly up to 1000 not cross not cross 1000 though but take it up to 1000 so perfect. I, the question I have is, you have a 599 entry product today, uh, which yeah. is your entry point, right? And I am not saying right. go down on the quality strata or whatever, but uh, is is it possible? Or in your mind, you are not looking at at let's say another four, uh, 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 giving the 399 uh, rupee customer? No, no, we, we will not be. No, no, we will not be looking at. That. So, so we are looking at 599 and we are waiting for the customer to come up to that strata. That is that is our, our approach right now. Exactly. Exactly. That's how we design the portfolio of a product. And I think, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Varun Singh from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for uh, taking my question. Uh, so my first question is, uh, on uh, uh, like uh, when we look at the other discretionary uh, consumption uh, c companies or players or peer groups, we I mean a general observation is premium price points are outperforming the value price points. Yeah, so in our case, the uh, volume growth appears to be healthy, uh, but uh, given this uh, context of value price point uh, underperforming for many players, Vatam uh, sir, I mean if you if you could uh, share some color with regards to uh, our company that how are we, I mean, how our numbers are, are uh, uh, st uh, stacking up? No, I think, look, see, we are, uh, we are very, see, I, I'll tell you, we are having the best of both worlds. We are somewhere value premium. We are not so value which is struggling in the market and we are not extremely premium that we become too expensive for a customer. We are in that sweet spot of being a value premium product. So I think from that perspective, I think our strategy holds good uh, moving forward also. We are not going to do, do premiumization because the premium category is another other in retail and retail. We are not going to do that just for the sake of doing that. We are going to continue in the value premium and I think the very good, it's the best of both worlds. I would rather put it that way. Understood. Uh, I mean, I uh, uh, if you would have done some analysis on price points related given the premium uh, portfolio, jeans, jeggings, etc. So, I mean, I just wanted to understand, uh, uh, I mean, in case these segment is outperforming from Varun, those uh, point of so view. Varun, if I take from a bottom wear perspective, out, in a bottom wear yeah. perspective, when we are going to be charging, say, 1100 rupees for a pant or 1200 rupees pant, that's already, those are already premium price points. Those are not very cheap to begin with. Though they are not very expensive, they are not very cheap to begin with. If today, if I try making a pants pricing at 1800 rupees or 1900 rupees, that is when my price disparity with the customer will start. Got it. Under two. And sir, my second question is on... That's why I call yeah. ourselves value premium. That's why I call it premium, or ourselves a value premium segment. Rather than calling ourselves just value or just premium, we are more of a value premium segment. Yeah. Sure. Understood. And sir, my second question is on uh, same store, sales growth. Uh, so, like, how are we thinking about uh, this number going forward? Uh, whether the bulk of it is going to come from higher volume or uh, better sales mix or price uh, pricing driven growth? Uh, so, I mean, how uh, uh, how uh, how should we be judging the or uh, uh, how are you thinking about the growth number given? Uh, the base uh, uh, would already incorporate whatever subdued performance uh, maybe from Q1 onwards. Currently, uh, currently because we have a flat volume SSG, our first objective and uh, aim is to make this go positive. So, very difficult to give a guidance right now because we are right now in the mid, we are just in the starting of Q1 or Q4. So, probably by middle of February, uh, we will have a better idea. But our first target is to make this positive. 
earlier we have guided saying that we will do a 5% volume ssg and a 10% value ssg but currently because we are far behind having flatish our first target is to make the volume as possible sure uh, i mean the reason i was asking this question is to understand that incrementally if we are doing more or are we expecting market forces to uh, market forces led ssg improvement no i think look at the combination of both i think uh, but rightly it would be market driven the minute the consumer is slightly start picking up that ssg number should start showing uh, start looking healthy okay got it so uh, thank you sir that's it from my side i wish you all the best thank you thank you very much thank you that was the last question for today i would now like to hand the conference over to mr gautam saraugi for closing comments over to you sir i would like to thank everyone for being part of this call uh, we hope we have answered all your questions if you need more information please feel free to contact mr dilen dhruv from sga our investor relations uh, advisor thank you so much on behalf of go fashion india limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines